Equipment maintenance. This is how one keeps a laboratory functioning. Uh, nothing is as useless as a laboratory cannot function because a, a piece of equipment has broken down. So there are two ways to think about maintenance. Uh, you can either do preventive maintenance, which keeps the equipment from breaking, or you can do curative maintenance. In, in both cases, one needs to know exactly how the equipment functions, how to keep it working, and how to get it to work again after it breaks down, because equipment do break down. So one thing to think about is to have backup equipment also, if possible, if, if the budget allows it. Also, another way to do maintenance is to have contracts with external service organizations. And it's also useful to have alarms on some equipment that will let you know that something goes wrong before your samples go bad. Now currently we're standing in front of a piece of equipment that requires a lot of maintenance. We have a lot of tubing and these tubings get blocked every once in a while. So they have to be changed. So one needs to do that. So we, we, we keep a few of them around as replacement parts, you know, so that we don't have to wait because every time you order something, there is a, a time that you have to wait for uh, before you can get the, 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 the part in your hands. See, our auto analyzer is what we use for nitrogen and phosphorus determination. And uh, it's really important to keep it working. There are a lot of moving parts in it. So part of the maintenance also is to keep those moving parts working. So we use some uh, uh, WD-40, uh, very useful. You know, and, and uh, in order to run the machine, so you see the arm just went from here to here, and we have to keep it going. Otherwise, you know, so now it's picking up some of the sample, um, sending it through the machine, you know, for us to get some results. But all that action, we, we have different moving parts in here, and we have to make sure they're all working. They're all well oiled uh, or the maintained, well maintained. Okay, so now we are, we're adding the sample we want to scan on the near infrared reflectance on the nears and um, it's put into the sample cup. The sample cup goes on, on the instrument and now we have the, the sample that's currently being run by the machine automatically and that will generate the about 30 parameters uh, with the prediction equ equation that we're using for this type of grass hay. So it takes about 30 seconds before the machine tells us it's ready. We have absolutely nothing to do. It is the fastest way to analyze for samples. Uh, there are a few things to consider. However, um, this is probably the future of lab work. Um, and that's, that's, uh, that's where everybody is going. Everybody wants to, it's just like computers. Uh, the faster, the better. And it's never fast enough for anyone. So currently we're doing about 30 different analysis, which would take a lot of time. Boom, it's ready. It pops up, it tells us, and we have all the results here. We're done. So we're currently in our oven room. And we have an oven problem. Well, talking about maintenance in the buildings and maintenance for the equipment, this piece of equipment stopped working. Uh, so we identified the issue. Okay, it is it is a controller here that that was we identified it thanks to the manual, which allowed us to to find the part number. And from the part number, we were able to order the part and, and get it. And now we can use our toolbox to open up the equipment and try to replace the part and make it going again. Uh, another issue for maintenance that we need to talk about that has to do with administration uh, is that 
this piece of equipment, this part, costs a whole lot of money. It's about 70% of the cost of a new one. So we have decisions to be making. Do we want to spend that much money on a part or do we want to purchase a new equipment? Those are decisions and those decisions do involve the lab manager and the study director. Things to think about. Instru it's instrument maintenance is a priority for every laboratory. Um, you don't want to, an equipment to be stopped. In order to do the maintenance, we have a document that you must have, which is your manuals for the equipment. You, usually the equipment is purchased from a company. The company provides it with a manual. Without the manual, it's re really impossible to do the maintenance as intended by the company. And one must keep, rec keep records. Keep records of the maintenance, keep record of what breaks down, when it breaks down. So, so this is ma maintenance of equipment is a day-to-day -day thing of a laboratory. And it's also something that the, the, the laboratory manager and director has to get used to. Because every time you come in, there, there might be a surprise. So uh, be ready, be prepared, have your manuals and have either the knowledge or somebody with the knowledge that can help you fix the issue.